Today we will be talking about back pressure. So back pressure is this concept. Imagine that there is like a flow of water and you are trying to you're trying to oppose it with your back. So the, the the water forces you and then you try to force against it, against the flow of the water. Back pressure is a force that opposes something. And today in this application we have this problem where user types something in the contact search and every type is being sent to the server. There is a lot of unnecessary communication between the client and the server. It would be nice to limit it somehow in a convenient way. And luckily enough, there is RX Dart reactive extension in Dart. So before we go further, I encourage you to check the reactive extension website and the GitHub repository. And there is a lot of wiki uh, pages which describe the concepts. For example, back pressure. It's pretty well written and I encourage you to read through that and try to understand all the concepts. So regarding back pressure, there are many methods, like several methods, but today we'll be talking about debounce. So debounce is this method that if you have a flow of events, once you add the bounce and you specify the timer, as you can see here, the bounce takes a parameter which is a time window. So the the amount of time it should not pass through the events, which means that if there is a lot of events, one very close one to another, like this one, two, three, four, five, and the debounce window is is large enough, it will only pass through the last event. In a similar way here, as you can see, those two events are very close. The time between the meeting number one, yellow number one and yellow number two is very close. So if the debounce is larger than that, only the second, uh, the last element of that will be taken into account. And this is exactly what we need to limit the exchange between the client and the server in our application. So there is another nice website I recommend you to check out, which is called RX Marbles. And here you have, it's like a single page app where you can uh, select a method you are interested in from reactive extensions, which apply to RX Dart as well, of course. Let's select the bounce. And here you can play with it. So you can, for example, move it around, as you can see, with this configuration, the event number one and event number two are will be uh, passed through or will be uh, will be not filtered. They will be available. But if we make it closer, only the event number two will be available. So if we take this example and apply it to our scenario, to to our situation, where user types a lot of letter in a very short span. If we define a, a large enough window, we will only be getting the last set of letter that has been typed. Let's try to do that. And this is very simple. So let me go back here. And let me go back to the contact manager where the stream magic happens. So here we are getting the, we have the filter subject where we are getting the queries that are being typed. And we listen on that and then we pass every query to the service, which then sends the request to our backend. So every letter creates a word, a part of a word, a fragment, and it's being sent. So it would be nice to add here, before we pass it through, before we pass it to the context service, to create this window so only the last element in this stream is being passed. So. And that's exactly what the bounce is all about. And we have to specify the duration. So in our case, let's do uh, something longer for now, just to, you could see. So let's see how it works in practice. So now, and let's open our So now if I type, let's say, three letters, 
after two seconds is being sent to the server. If I type a lot of letters, two seconds and the, the query is being sent. So as you can see, I'm typing, nothing happens, nothing happens because I'm still typing and then I'm stopping. And then the query is being sent to the server. So it's perfect. It's exactly what we needed. And it solves our problem in a very clean way. That's why streams are so nice to work with. But there's another problem here. You remember that we added this special thing to our API, to our backend, that whenever we are typing LE, it will send the response only after two seconds. Let's try to do something here. So first of all, I will limit this to something more um, realistic. So usually, let's say, 500 uh, milliseconds so now it means that if I type you know it's I stopped and almost immediately the query would be was being sent and then again so it's more fluid uh, we type something we stop 500 milliseconds and then we have our request being sent to the backend and there is this situation if I type three letters before we, I describe this, let's observe what happens if I type three letters. If I type LEM, I have two results. If I type LE, which is this long query, after two seconds I will have three results. And if I type L, I have more results, more than uh, three results. So now, watch what happens. I type three letters. I have two and then it's being replaced and I had longer list and then it's being replaced by the results of LE of this law of this uh, special query which takes two seconds and this is because when we type L after LE LE was still processing because it was waiting for these two seconds so the results of L returned faster but then LE was sent back and replaced the list. So this is not what we want to have in our application. And you may say that this example is uh, contrived, but uh, in real life, uh, some requests may take longer, some may take less time. It, it always depends on the network and you will never know. We need to resolve this problem. And luckily enough, in reactive extension, there is a beautiful uh, solution. But we will discuss that in the next episode. See you next time.